Welcome to the Elon Musk Signal Channel. The latest updates on Starbase reveal significant progress on Ship 30, SpaceX's second orbital launch tower. The completion date for this tower has also been disclosed. But what we're most interested in is the thrust puck testing on B1 14.1, crucial step in preparing for the first ever recovery of the super heavy booster. How's everything progressing? Let's explore right now. Over the past week, construction activities on ship Quick Disconnect are nearing completion. However, at Boca Chica, it would be remiss not to mention the appearance of the following peculiar hardware. While small elliptical domes are no longer novel, this time we have a rather unique structure. It's not the standard dome type and has additional welded details. Currently, the exact function of this hardware remains unclear. As we all know, the key determinant affecting SpaceX's next flight schedule is the progress of Starship 30. Currently, the thermal protection system of Starship 30 shows significant improvement. New heat-resistant materials and enhanced heat shields are being gradually installed on the nose cone. The upgrade progress of the thermal protection system on Starship 30 is proceeding at an astonishing pace. SpaceX is accelerating the removal of the old heat shield layers and focusing entirely on replacement. The nose cone area is increasingly covered with new heat-resistant materials and improved heat shield. Compared to images from last week, the dense presence of heat shields on the spacecraft's body indicates remarkable progress. This area is nearly entirely enveloped by the new material. Based on the current progress, SpaceX is likely to complete the thermal protection system replacement in the coming weeks, preparing Starship 30 for its next flight. Of course, achieving full operational readiness for this system will still require many more steps. However, based on past achievements, we can trust SpaceX's ability to complete this swiftly. Apart from two test panels, SpaceX engineers have yet to tackle the flaps area, critical part of the thermal management system. Typically, these specialized areas pose the greatest challenges, requiring curved or custom-manufactured heat shield panels. However, SpaceX beginning work on the nose cone section, which requires unique vaulted heat shields, is a positive sign. In just a few hours, the front section has been covered almost halfway. At the site of the second launch tower, construction activities continue around the clock, 24-7. Even in the middle of the night, work does not cease. The Terex CC 8800D1 crane is being perfected to serve the assembly of the second launch tower. With the impressive progress of the crane and the near completion of the tower base, SpaceX seems poised to start this process soon. Currently, SpaceX is assembling Configuration 1, designed for lifting the first six segments of the tower, also known as tower sections. These initial six segments are expected to be raised by July 27. Subsequently, over the following four weeks, SpaceX will transition to Configuration 2, while Configuration 1 remains at a height of 140 meters above ground level. Configuration 2 will be even higher, reaching 172 meters above ground level. The second configuration of the crane will operate from July 27th to August 15th to complete the remaining part of the launch tower. This is a projected timeline and subject to change, but it appears SpaceX aims to complete the second launch tower before August 15th. Additionally, installation of the water pipe and cable systems on the tower's body is also underway. This piping system has the capability to supply necessary fluids to Starship via ship quick disconnect. Moreover, the cable system includes data and power lines for the launch tower, and larger fluid conduits are also being finalized. The second launch tower is anticipated to feature numerous improvements and additions compared to the first tower. Alongside new upgrades, some elements remain unchanged. For example, staircases have already been installed midway up the tower section in the video. Other images show workers handling new tower segments, including applying corrosion-resistant paint. This coating is essential to protect the segments from the salty air of the Gulf of Mexico. This type of paint is used across most projects at Boca Chica to prevent rust. A notable highlight is the Chopstick System Rocket Catch Test. The small test basin was raised onto the mobile launch platform last week, sparking speculation that it would serve the chopsticks test. Even before B114.1 joined, we observed the chopsticks system beginning to move and undergo testing. 
prototype B114.1 does not have a complete booster quick disconnect at the rear like current operational boosters. Therefore, it cannot directly interface with the quick disconnect panel on the mobile launch platform. However, a conduit has been set up through the side door of the fairing, allowing B114.1 to connect to necessary equipment. Despite being shorter than actual boosters, prototype B114.1 still possesses structural characteristics similar to the rocket body that the chopstick system will grasp on a fully operational rocket. B114.1 is the sole prototype for this test. The primary goal is to evaluate the chopstick system. SpaceX has invested significant effort in upgrading the system's drive components. From observation images, it appears the right side chopstick strut has undergone more upgrades, with a stronger drive mechanism and thicker padding to prepare for rocket catching. Conversely, the left side strut seems to be in the final stages of completion. SpaceX may intentionally be testing upgrades on one strut before applying them to the remaining struts. Upon completing preparations, the formal test occurred on the 25th. The chopstick system moved into position and prepared to test alongside B114.1 before attempting to catch the prototype rocket. SpaceX may be adjusting the system to create a ground catch for the booster. In other words, chopsticks will close around the rocket upon landing, ready to support it with holding clamps. This swift movement seems to be SpaceX's adjustment target. The dry run above the rocket prototype appears to be the first step in minimizing risks before actually catching the booster. Following the dry runs, SpaceX moved chopsticks closer to the rocket prototype, seemingly satisfied with the results. The precise positioning of chopsticks shows SpaceX has identified the expected contact points between the strut and the rocket. This is why the test was conducted in this specific area. SpaceX continues to test chopsticks and B114.1 with higher risks, evident in the road closures. The test includes simulated light contacts and actual impact stops. Strong impacts cause the test prototype to shake, indicating SpaceX is identifying stopping points and assessing collision risk. Total of seven contacts were executed. Although the tests were quite intriguing, the journey of prototype B114.1 had to conclude at the end of last Thursday. SpaceX attached the dispersal unit to the test prototype and moved it from the orbital launch platform. The transport support was brought to the location and the prototype was placed on it for removal from the launch area. SpaceX stated that the Starbase team was testing the launch tower's chopstick system to prepare for catching the upcoming super heavy rocket. Will SpaceX deploy the booster catch operation immediately on the fifth flight? or delay it for practice on the subsequent. The decision probably depends on their readiness level and confidence in this operation. And those are the notable highlights from today's video. Thank you for watching. Please leave your comments on this broadcast and stay tuned for upcoming exciting events in the next episodes. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to await interesting videos on the Elon Musk Signal channel. Goodbye and see you again.